Hello and welcome everybody to another Wednesday Hobby and Chat. I am joined once again by the crew. We got Aaron, Sean, and Josh from top to bottom. Aaron, you're on top today. At least you are on my screen, which means you are on everybody else's screen. So cool. good for you. Boy, oh boy, do we have a lot of things to talk about today. But before we talk about GW, let's first talk about which projects we are working on. Aaron, you're on top. That means you go first. Uh, so I'm currently now working on a Skaven warband for Warcry. The reason being is I hear they're OP and I want to see for myself. So I got a bunch of rat ogres and plague, uh, plague monks. Pretty fun. Excellent. I am still working on my Marines, but I think I'm probably going to get done with the exception of the bases. All the troops will probably be done by the end of today's stream, which will be exciting. Sean, you still working on your Father's Day present? Oh, yeah. Which is a... Samurai. Can can you see it? Is it all blacked out? Yeah, yeah it's all blacked out. You can see it a little bit. You see a little bit of red and stuff like that? Yeah, so same, same thing as last week because I'm super lazy. And Josh, you're playing Fallout? No, I'm painting. I'm making you mad. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, Who are those, Josh? More, uh... More, Guardians. More Marvel. Are you, are you burning his house down? Look at Oh, wait, you're not playing. Oh, Drax down. and Ronin, Gamora, and Nebula. Where are you even getting these models? I got those ones at, uh, at uh, Grognards today. Oh, you went to Grognards? Well, I needed something to paint for tonight. Did you see Todd? No, he wasn't there. I had to go. I had to punch out early because we're low on census. So I had to punch out for a, like a long lunch break. I was like, I'll just drive to Grognards and get my stuff. Nice. That's Always exciting. Something happen at Grognards. Yeah, there was nothing happening there, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Well, real fast, Aaron, real fast. Real I fast. have an old fifth edition pewter, like special edition Skaven guy with a triangle shield. That has been in a box forever and if you want it i will just mail that junk to you well i have like a whole box of plague monks yeah but those uh, are plastic and this is metal yeah. you could club someone with it even though it's a rat yeah well rats think have about clubs it. think uh, about it all right i'll think about it thank <laughs> you old metal oh. models it's been a long time since i worked on a metal model thank god so gentlemen yes a lot of new stuff for Warhammer, and I actually I have it opened up in a different screen, so I thought that we would just start some conversation. Where do you want to start with today? We got Faction Focus Chaos, Faction Focus Marines, we got the bikes, and we have the um, Overwatch. Dealer's Choice. Well, I don't want to talk about Overwatch because uh, apparently it's not what I want it to be. I just I, ruined it for him. We so are we are gonna talk about Overwatch, but let's start let's start with the uh, the forty k bikes. Okay, they're they're bikes with four wounds, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So I think they look they still look pretty sweet, um, but they did uh, they did give a, a preview of them, and so they have movement speed fourteen, weapon skill three plus, ballistic skill three plus, strength four, toughness five, wounds four, attacks two, leadership seven, save three plus. And I guess that makes sense because old bikes took it from one to two, so why would it take it from two to three, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they're Primaris plus a, a bike now, so good old T five. Mm -hmm. So did you guys see this uh, Raider pattern? That's the name of it. Do you think there's going to be other bikes? And I'm not talking ATVs here. Raider pattern. Uh, I think it's just what the name of it is. I, I don't Possible. Possible. Because they might have scout pattern. Yeah, yeah. I'm, with, I'm with Josh on this one. I think we're going to see, you know, like one standard bike, an ATV that's going to take the place of the attack bike, and then we might have something scout-wise. Well, we got the ATV, the buggy, the doom buggy. Uh, I think you're you're talking about the the one that attaches to the squad, right, Sean? Uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, we're also going to see whether uh, that kind of paradigm has changed, right? Is it just a completely separate unit? Um, 
which you kind of had the option to make it a separate unit or be a uh, a part of the squad um, with the last edition of the rules. So I kind of feel like you're going to get the same options um, with these guys. But again, you know, we've seen tons and tons and tons of mono model squads. So they might not. I mean, I do... I do like that the movement is 14 inches and not 12. Were the the, the, the bikes from 8th Ed uh, 12 or 14? Right, Regular bikes are 12, I think. Aren't they? I think they were 14. Oh, are they? Okay. In my mind, they're 12. I think they were before this last edition. Oh, oh it seems like they should be slower because they're so chonky chonky no but yeah. they uh they have bigger they have bigger wheels so that makes them faster oh okay doesn't that actually make things slower that's not how the world works sir the not world the of 40k 40k oh, all right what color am i doing next today i gotta do banana i gotta do all the silver on the bottom of the vents for their backpack the point the vents that make no sense to me the pointless vents. By the way, I had a couple people say, hey, Aaron, how come you're painting straight out of your pot and not mixing it down with water? And I'll tell you that my lead belcher, my iron breaker, uh, my screaming skull, and my, nope, not that one, um, this one, uh, my Gorther Brown, I have pre-mixed all of these with acrylic flow release and water in the pot to the consistency that I generally like using them at because I use them so often. Um, so they're just ready to go. I just got to shake them up. If I do need to thin it down more, I will, but pretty, I, I usually don't. Um, and if I need it thicker, I have a, another batch of it in my drawers. So that's why I'm painting right out of my pot. Hey, Aaron, uh, because they are in Citadel pots, have you ever thought about adding a little bit of drying retardant to it? So yeah, no, yeah, I did that too. Yeah. Did you? All right, there's some, there's there you some, go. There's some retarder. I was going to say, I always got to get that in the gumbo. We do. We do. And that's a lot more special than I would do. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I've got this gloopy paint that I'm mixing with some water that I'm using for all these models because it's old GW paint. I'm just scrubbing it on my with my brush. And Josh, have you ever painted a, an army with apple barrel paints? You know, the ones from uh, Walmart? And yes. <laughs> um, my Necron army is based in a lot of those colors, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, because I didn't want to spend a lot of money since I was batch painting a huge amount. Have you busted out your Necrons yet? Well, I mean, they're at the studio. There's not much to bust out. I guess right that's now. true. But they will be busting out. They're all pretty much painted, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty much all done. So we just got to get you the new stuff. Just need the new stuff, and I'll start banging it out. I dare to ask, but Sean, have you picked your next 40K project? Um, No, I haven't. just know hey what do you guys think of my gamora so far i like that white yeah. is it green in there? Huh? is it what's the uh, recess color uh it's a wash of the contrast black oh, okay that's a pretty solid contrast color yeah the black templar yeah yep. yeah i'm liking this so far it's pretty cool what do you think of the rules for the Guardians? Uh, they're really cool. They're very diverse, which is interesting. Um, Gamora is like, uh, like a semi-glass cannon melee character, which is kind of cool. Uh, she can do a lot of damage, and she's got some, uh, some stuff to make her a little bit uh, more precise. And then uh, you've got... Uh, What's really weird is that uh, Nebula can't hold objectives or contest objectives. What? She's just unable to score. Uh, but, That's terrible. But she costs two points, and 
she has a rule that says she gets to re-roll multiple dice if she's targeting somebody that's holding an objective or or an item. So she's like a, a real assassin. Oh. Hmm. That's cool. That's kind of very cool. different. Yeah. So I like that. So the next the next big thing, and I think we should just jump right into it because I know there's going to be a lot of controversy over it, um, is Overwatch. Oh, I thought you were going to say boxers or briefs. <laughs> I was thinking about whether I should do a fake, but then I decided not to do a fake. So the Overwatch seems... There's a couple things in the Overwatch, and I will... I'll pull it up so that uh, our viewers can take a look at it, too. Let me go to the Overwatch rules. So they changed it. The big thing is they changed Overwatch to a stratagem. Right. That you need to cast, that you need to spend CP to use. However, they did say that some units will get it inherently and other things might give you Overwatch. They showed that some terrain is going to uh, at least modify Overwatch for uh, infantry models. And then, you know, special rules can also change that. But. For the most point, they said part. They said that um, it was going to be rare to be able to Overwatch without the stratagem. Um, All right. And Sean got really mad because I pointed <laughs> out that in the actual uh, thing that they said, the Tau, he's like, "Oh, a Tau are going to get Overwatch." And then I was like, "Well, they specifically say that rule comes from the Crusade mode and not in the competitive mode." And he's like, "No." Well, but it also specifically says that Tau have that are going to have some other special ability related to Overwatch. And, and then it has a picture of Tau. Uh, so it says that when facing a big gun line that's unit to dug into Silent Tray, crucial boost can make your opponent think twice, especially long-range charge that may end in failure. You may find that for some units benefit from other special rules that modify Overwatch as well, such as the Tau Empire for the greater good special rule. They don't elaborate what the greater good special right. rule is going to be. It could just be that they, they get, get to o- they get to Overwatch or they get to bonus. Yeah. Or um, when you pay to use stratagem, you might be able to do it with all the units in your army for that turn or something. Then it has a preview of a rule called Cool Headed that says you can reroll failed morale test taken for this unit. In addition, if a unit declares this unit as a target of their charge, this unit can fire Overwatch and will score hits unmodified rolls a five plus instead of six when doing so that's the one that got sean hyped and then yep. quickly dashed to the ground yep because then you keep reading and it says from crusade mode yup so Wait, that where's, where's it say from crusade mode it right re- keep reading that paragraph that you just read i just read the whole paragraph Okay. You can re-roll failed morale test taken for the result. In addition, if a unit declares this unit as a target of their charge, this unit can fire Overwatch and will score hits on unmodified rolls five plus instead of six when doing so. End bracket period. You, so it's you... actually in the sentence right above that um, that it says it's part of Crusade mode. So that's kind of interesting, right? That there's going to be different abilities that you can give your army. Uh... Oh, it's a battle trait. I see. It's a your units. Can, one of our favorite new ones is a battle trait. Your units can receive as part of a crusade force, permanently granting them free and improve Overwatch. Gotcha. Okay, but we still don't know what the greater good special rule is going to do. Or right. what exactly is a battle trait? It seems as though exactly. It, it seems as though a battle trait is um, bonuses that you give for campaign stuff. Right. So, yeah, I was wondering if maybe it's something like in campaigns, you get some points and then you can spend those on getting whatever these battle traits are to buff up your army instead of like adding a bunch of models. Yeah, possibly. The, the other the other really important thing that's in this document is that they tell you that you're only going to be able to use one command point per phase. And I am Wait, one. one co- it says you can only use one per phase one per phase well that's in relationship to the overwatch stratagem no well i mean that's when it was talked about 
Yes. The first, the first, here it is. What's new? The first and biggest change is that Overwatch has shifted from a standard reaction to a core stratagem, costing one command point to perform. As stratagems can only be used once per phase. Yeah, not command point stratagems. We are, that's the current rule. Yeah. Oh, strat. Okay. All right. You're right. 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 Okay. That's not a big deal then. No. But you won't be able to give. I see what they're saying. You won't be able to have all five of your units who are getting charged um, Overwatch because you can only use the stratagem once, not the command point once. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'm less excited about that. I was really happy that. I thought it was only one command point per phase because, to me, that is that is the that is the correct amount. <laughs> um, I don't I don't want to get in situations where it's like I spend this and I do this and I pull out this rule and then I spend two more and everything on your side of the table explodes. Well, that's what it's about, buddy. Apparently, GW only likes MSUs on the charge. I don't know what any of those words mean. Multiple small units. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, multiple small units or minimum size units. Um, meaning, like, you know, your five dudes uh, charging in are going to benefit because the opponent's only going to be able to use one Overwatch, right? Uh, but right. if you are a defender uh, with a bunch of minimum size units, uh, it's going to really suck for you because you're really going to have to try and figure out when to use that Overwatch. I mean, everything that I'm seeing is telling me that this game is about getting up in each other's face as fast as possible. Yes. They said it was going to be faster, and faster means probably more melee. Yep. Um, and they just flat out say that in the Chaos preview. Oh. Well, that. so what does that mean for us, you know, tiny little squishy fish cow people? Um you know, you get took a new away army, most, bra. Yeah, you know, you took away the most powerful thing in the entire world, which is, hey, I get to basically run Overwatch, being I get to control your your assault phase. Um, they first of all, they haven't said that. They've specifically they calm calm true, yourself, calm true. yourself. They specifically say that the Tau has a special rule called the Greater Good, which they have not defined, and then they have a literal picture of a gun line of Tau forces. So I would not worry about the gun line of Tau forces. What I will say is that the gun line of Tau forces contains the Tau building, the Tau uh, structure that I gave you. Fortification or whatever? Fortification. Um, so, you know, you're probably still going to be able to do it, but it's going to have well, rules on how you do it. Right. And should we talk about um, the terrain benefits that they described? Yeah, we can talk about the terrain benefits because for sure. Because they also affect Overwatch, which is kind of interesting. So we've heard and seen a little bit about the terrain benefits uh, that they're going to be um, putting out in the new edition, right? Um, and one of the things that they showed off in this Overwatch was defensible terrain types or terrain benefits. So that could, what defensible means is infantry units can hold steady or defend. So you're getting to pick something uh, I don't know when you're going to get to pick this. Maybe at the end of your turn? Is it kind of like readying? Or... It might be like when the charge happens. Because in Warhammer Fantasy, you used to be able to say you can run, hold, you know, stuff like that. Great. Right. Okay. So you can kind of pick it when someone's about to get into your grill. So you have two abilities in Defensible. Uh, hold Steady and Set to Defend. Hold Steady gives Overwatch attacks to hit on fives. So that's kind of cool. Yep. Or you can set to defend, which means you can't fire Overwatch at all, but you add one to your hit rolls in the next fight phase. So now if you're in terrain, fighty or shooty, you got some options. So wait, so what happens if it's defensible heavy cover? Then you get, then you get plus plus one armor you get plus one to your save mm -hmm. and plus one to your hit rolls very what? possible is someone typing no <laughs> that means yes i don't like the trade rolls tell i me, think tell me this why. is like really complicated right now that thing right there you know so i'm hoping that they're going to provide us a lot of clarity when they actually come out with the book but right now, 
Um, we're, we're operating in a vacuum. We don't know exactly what the underlying rules are that these complicated things are going to be glued on top of. Um, it concerns me very greatly, right? Um, I know it's been said that, hey, they're going to pick some sort of terrain rules and that's what we're going to use on, you know, all the terrain on the board. Well, that defeats the purpose of having a silo and a marsh and a this and a that and all that fun stuff, right? So instead of a simple, hey, this is three up, this is four up, this is five up, whatever, whatever, um, you know, now we're looking at mixing and matching rules and keeping track of it. And then we're going to get some spells that do some stuff. And then they're going to bring back Geomancy and it's just going to be Geomancy. I'm, I'm concerned, right? Like, listen to how, listen to how he said Geomancy. I'm concerned. <laughs> just wait until well, Endless Spells come out halfway through the edition. Yeah. Like That's another wait, thing I got to keep track of. You got to pay money to use psychic powers now. Yes. <laughs> Take that. Take that wallet. Disposable income. Oh. Oh, you mean real money. I was like, what in-game money do you have to spend to do psychic powers? But you meant real money. Yes. Well, I agree that this is getting a little difficult to comprehend. And I'm not super pleased about the idea of needing to keep track of, well, this unit is in heavy cover and this one is in soft cover and this one has declared that it's going to overwatch on fives and this one has declared that it's not going to overwatch on fives um it does it it it, it is feeling like a lot i'll be honest it feels like we're gonna have a lot more tokens on the board which is why i was really excited when i thought that it said that you can only spend one command point per phase because i was like oh okay so we have more complexity here but we have a lot less complexity over here uh, but i I'm nope. wrong. It seems like the name of the game for this is is complexity and speed, though. But complexity and speed do not go hand in hand. No, they do not. So I'm not seeing speed. I'm seeing complexity. Right. So I guess the speed is like you start 24 inches away from each other and you'll get into combat really quick. And then these these rules won't matter after the after the first turn of combat, right? I I guess maybe. Mm. It's interesting. I, I'm not I, I'm not too hot on the these new rules. Overwatch not. I mean Overwatch uh, itself is it, going to be wonky as heck. So. I don't know. People are going to make that mistake forever. Which mistake? Overwatch. They'll just assume they can Overwatch, and it's going to be messy for a little while, I think. I mean, I'm fine getting rid of, like, I'm fine just getting rid of Overwatch, because with the exception of Flamers, yes, it was really fun when, like, you actually killed somebody and that thing stopped something from happening, but it was pretty rare that Overwatch... Tau. <laughs> Right, I played two, because the of the Tau. I played two Overwatch, so Overwatch was a very, very important thing in my game. I understand, but but I'm talking about Overwatch in general, not Overwatch no, no. for Tau. And since Tau have special rules, I would assume that they would still have special rules to make Overwatch work. So I'm saying Overwatch in general, shooting with bolt pistols on a six up at strength four, one time, um, very rarely had an effect on the game, but it certainly took a lot of time. You are correct, but having a squad with a bunch of multi meltas I'm not multi meltas combo meltas in them, and getting to fire a whole bunch of combi meltas in Overwatch kind of guarantees you're going to get one, and if it just happens to be a character charging you, that... that That's you know, true. That's so, true. So, like, I'm not saying that it was the best thing ever. What I'm saying is it was a part of the game that I played, too, because I knew how it worked, and I knew how the numbers work, right? And how very, like you said, drastically you could change the game. Your Smash Captain got shot in the face for eight damage... Sorry. Yeah. Unless you had those wings. I feel like these Overwatch rules are, are making us sad, and I want to make us happy. <laughs> Let's talk about Marvel <laughs> Crisis Protocol. Thanos is coming out. Right. That we makes... talked about him last time. <laughs> I yeah. know. I'm just joking. Um, okay. Well, what do you think about the new Chaos rules and the fighting twice and the bubbles uh, and things like that? And then that model that they showed, that really awesome giant walking model. Wait, they showed off a new model for? Chaos? I didn't see that. I don't yeah, know if it was a new model, but it, it's uh. Doo, doo, doo. 
Um, this the defiler? One, no. This one model army is devastating all around in addition to any heretic Astartes force. The Lord Discord on Hellstalker. The Disco oh, Lord? He's that's been old. Yeah. I know, but the aura, I said the... Oh. The aura that he has is new. Aura of Discord. Subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by vehicle units while they're within six inches of an enemy model with this ability. In addition, add one to hit rolls for attacks made by Legion demon engine units while they are within six inches of enemy friendly legion models with this ability i feel like that is not a new ability i think that's what they did before or they just re-rolled ones or added one to the hits um well i think what they added here i can't remember but they add one to hit rolls for attacks made by legion daemon uh un engine units while they're within six so i think did it always buff nearby? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it always buffed. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of the stuff for these faction focus is just like, hey, your stuff's going to work just the way it did in this other edition. Yeah, that's true. So I don't really, I haven't seen anything real special about those yet. What so. about the What about the attacking twice? The attack, the corn berserkers attacking twice. Is it's it a strategy? Yeah, yeah, it's a strategy. It's They've had it's that in the last one too. So what you're saying is there's nothing new? That is nothing new. That's correct. Yeah, I was trying to figure out. I don't know if the Defiler melee profile is the same or not. Okay, so I'm failing to make everybody happy with Corn <laughs> and with Overwatch. Um, what about the Faction Focus Space Marines? I did not see really anything new there. I think both of them are really just <laughs> narratives from like really good players on kind of general overall yeah. is the thing of the army. I mean, they definitely paid somebody, some community person to write something or they've submitted it. So what uh, about, what about the reroll wound and reroll damage for grav guns for one CP? Uh, that is telling everybody that since they got rid of all of their grav guns for last edition, now they need to go out and get grav guns again because they... <laughs> now they get to reroll the hit and wound rolls. So that's new. That, I believe, is new. Awesome. And I somebody, one of us predicted grav was coming back. I did. <laughs> I also was thinking. Well, I, was, they, I was thinking that as well. They always switch back and forth from one edition to the uh, another. Something is hot and something is not. But, it, but did, it, it doesn't even matter, though, because there's no Primaris with Grav Guns. So they're going to have guess. to sell. Right. So you wouldn't have to switch because you don't. Ha it's not like you had Primaris Marines in 7th edition with Grav Guns. I, is there any that have Grav Guns? I don't think there are, right? That's no, my point. Just the old dudes. Yeah. That's my point. Your point is well taken. Um, well, the, the centurions the melt up big guys right? the, centur the centurions are still playable and they have grab guns and my centurions are all grab gun centurions because they're from seventh no you still have a couple unopened boxes at the studio i saw them. <laughs> no those are the uh those are the close combat centurions isn't that just a multi-kit kit, kit comes with all the parts in it i don't think so i think you have to pick I I promise you, I got like nine of them. I, I want to be. You. I want to be. Promises. Right. I want to <laughs> be right. Let me be Listen, right. Why don't you talk about some Fallout stuff? Then you can be right. <sighs> I I want to know what you guys think about because we're talking about weapons, right? I feel like the Melta gun was horribly underrepresented last uh, last edition. Yeah, it's because and, weight of fire is so much stronger than. Yeah. Do you think that we're going to see something that might change that now that we're getting to this whole no Overwatch, no blah blah blah? um does it look like we're primed to move back to single really nasty hits probably mean something probably not because of the, yeah. it's still the same base chassis for the game you still have the 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 rolls to to damage and wound and stuff like that i think that's going to remain the same uh unfortunately but didn't they one of the new marines isn't it a unit of melted dudes like the unit of plasma dudes Yes. Isn't that one of the new ones? So I, we are getting Melta Marines. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, to Josh's point, that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be good. 
No, that's true. But it also opens the door very clearly and could be quickly grab Marines, grab Primaris. True. I mean, the question the, the question is we don't know how wound allocation is working. So if this is going to be big horde armies running towards smaller, powerful, shooty armies, then it's going to be really important to know whether or not those six wounds are going to carry over between models and units as to whether they're going to be good or not. Right? Yeah. So if a melt -a gun can vaporize, you know, four Termagons, then... Oh, if it's going to carry over, it'll be a, a totally different game. But we don't know what we don't know whether they're going to do that or not. Is all no. I'm saying. But if they did, it would be everything is up in the air then, because that's such a huge change. Yep. I like it. Well, then you would just be taking guns that just have really high damage and make sure you hit once you well just... they showed the uh the necron army like shooting their big guns like saying hey shoot the uh space marines with your d6 damage guys or your d3 shots so maybe that makes sense if they're gonna over they're gonna carry over because right now that sounds like the dumbest thing you'd want to do with it <laughs> well hey they gotta hype the new stuff anyways Again, good or bad. I mean, there's got to, like, we know we know that that blast thing is a big deal, right? And we know that they're trying to get tanks to work. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there has to be, something's got to give here. It can't just, oh, I forgot to paint all the bags on these guys. Darn it. Well, and, you know, maybe, maybe we're going to see some sort of special ability on weapons that, you know, allows that in certain cases, or it might be blanket or... We might not, but I think that's another one of those big unanswered questions at this point that really, to Josh's point, you know, dictates a huge facet of the game and how it's going to work, you know, in the future. Because if we move forward, you know, assuming that everything has is going to work the same way it has previously with wound allocation, and it doesn't. Yeah, right. these um, these plague marines with the flails, those carry through. Right. Yeah, so like there, th those things exist in the game yeah. right now, right? Right. Um, but having it be something that's more prevalent, like say your auto cannon that does two damage, right? Okay, well now it explodes if it wounds you and that kills the right, model, that... it rolls over to the next one. Like that makes a logical kind of sense. I could see that happening. Same thing with like rending weapons, assault cannons, blast cannons, and not so much, but anything that's explosive, I feel like could you could make a case to to have anything such a thing, but then. The blast keyword but but then you're adding yeah anything with the blast keyword would be would make sense but now you're adding a, a, a rule another rule oh yeah absolutely and then if we do it with the blast templates right or with i'm uh, sorry with blast weapons now you're adding another rule on top of it so now you got a thing with two special rules unless that's There's just the, the way blast works which isn't that how yeah. isn't, that, isn't that what they kind of implied i i don't I understand remember. what they ever imply and what they imply is sometimes not what they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if what? I can. Let's see if I can refresh. Refresh. Refresh the blast rules. Because I feel like that was kind of the point. No, that was just the number of shots, right? It was just the number of yeah, shots. Yeah, just the number of shots. Yeah. Always a minimum of three, right? No, it depends on how many models are in the unit that's shooting. Uh, that you're but, shooting. but then a minimum is assigned to it. Right, from okay. whatever amount it would be. Okay, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling like everybody is sad. Still not <laughs> sad. So someone tell me what they're excited about. Kit, uh, kitten memes. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Are there some hot kitten memes on the interwebs right now? Yeah, man. Every day, mm -hmm. every day. I like it. Uh, I. You know what? I'm just excited that I feel like painting again. Honestly, do you want to yeah, see yeah, how? Yeah. See what I've got so far. Here, now you can see. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, yeah, pretty well. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. 
You got some deets on there? I'm like working it. on it. Yeah. yeah, Drax Drax looks really good. That's not Drax. <laughs> I know. Here, here's Gamora. I've done more work on her armor. Looking good. She's got orange eyes, just like in the comic book. But you can't really see it. No. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, I am actually... I'm still kind of excited for the addition. I'm just... It, the anticipation is there for just getting it all out in the open, getting the book. Um, speaking of books, I am, uh, as a Death Guard player, very excited to get my copy of the Spider book this weekend. The Fabius file has all the new Death Guard stratagems. So at least getting that. Getting that. Nice. Uh huh. I hope those turn out to really help that army. Yeah, I think that there'll be a decent band aid because there are some really good it's things. Kind, it's kind of weird, though, that they're releasing that before the new edition, isn't it? No, as long as they, they, they regularly do that, right? Where they build and release the last couple codexes, that type of stuff, with the intention of it being rolled over into the new edition. Yeah, they so, specifically said that it was made with the intent of the new edition. So right. Yeah, so you're going to see, right, um, I would assume they're would not be many changes other than we might have some errata and stuff like that um but things like blast weapons or some weird whatever whatever that might be overpowered for a little bit or completely useless um we should see fall into place when they get the new edition released oh that's why that had that weird word that we didn't understand what it meant because it was french <laughs> so i think i think it'll be I think it'll be okay. They've done it before and they've been very successful. Um, with that said, though, Aaron, what do you think about um, indexes? Are we gonna see indexes? They indices? Said, indexes? I don't know. I think they pretty much said that there were not going to be indexes yeah, because then they said that all your old books are going to work. That's okay, kind of, I can deal with that. That's kind of what they promised. Do you but think you... they're gonna? No, go uh, ahead, I was man. just going to say, do you remember when they made the 8th edition announcement at Adepticon and they said, hey, you don't need codexes anymore. You're just going to, everyone's going to work out of big indexes. Well, that's what they said for the start. Everyone knew that they weren't going to just stick with that. Did they? That's not how I remember it. Oh, I never thought for a second they were going to put out the codexes. That's just like straight up money in the bank for them. It's true. It's not just think... I, it's not just about money, Josh. This company, like the company, is not founded on the principle of let's scam our way into money. I don't. Um, that's I, not what I mean. When I think I say that this. I I think that is what you mean. I think that what they did was try to update everyone's rules all at the same time in the best way that they can, so that everybody could come to the game um, and have something fresh and new, and that works because it was such a big change from seventh edition to eighth edition. So they made the indexes. I think that's what they were doing. I don't well, think it was there, because they were, we were like, oh, well, we have to sell codexes. So, And there were a lot of really, really old codexes that badly needed a new codex. Um, yeah. Am I thinking Tyranids, maybe? Tyranids and, like, Dark Eldar? I don't know. What those Those esoteric alien armies that just were hurting the entire edition. But, um... Do you think they're going to update my uh, my digital codexes to the new ones when the new Absolutely ones come out? Absolutely not. <laughs> hey, I can dream. Yeah. yeah. You can. Well, we don't we don't know how the the new program is going to work. So it's possible that you know you might we might this might be the last time for a while. You might have to like buy updates to an existing codex. You know what I mean? That that'll that'll function inside of the program. You know what I mean? Oh, I was being yeah. super facetious. I am anticipating that they're going to go ahead and release a new codex of Starte's, you know, Happy Cool Time. That's going to have a slightly different title, and you know, is going to be another fifty bucks, which which is what they've done with all the previous digital editions. So. Um, it would be nice if you got some sort of. Do you buy the play enhanced? That. Do you buy the enhanced or the? I buy digital? the, I buy the enhanced because I, I love the enhanced. I love the enhanced as well. So, but it's a double-edged sword for me, right? I really like being able to have everything on one tablet. Um, I like that they update them when changes to point costs and rules come out. 
which sometimes they can be a little bit slow about, but overall um, is fantastic. Not having to tote around a you know sheet of paper that says, "Hey, this is what the points are." Um, but on the flip side, I find it so much easier to reference books. Yeah. Right? Even though I've got a library, I can flip through my library and get to what I need, or I put a post-it note on it, or this, that, and the other thing, and find exactly the phrase that I need much, much more quickly. Plus, I can you know read it, show it to my friend. It, there's just something tactile about the artifacts that seem to work much, much better for me. So I, I agreed or I, I committed this edition that I was going to go ahead and do all digital. I haven't bought a single paper book. And now with ninth coming out, I'm reevaluating that standpoint. And I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. I think, I think for like referencing and reading and learning the enhanced digital edition is great, but for actually playing a game, it's, it's not so great. You know that, I think that brings up another interesting point, Aaron, is that I, found myself not picking up my codex and sitting in my bed before I went to sleep and reading a couple pages, right? So my normal consumption of the material was very different because it wasn't these books, right? Um, I didn't take it, you know, I didn't take my codex on the airplane with me because I was going somewhere and crack it open while I'm sitting in my seat. You know, I got my iPad and I'm doing whatever I wanted to do on my iPad. So it's almost like it competed with some other... I don't want to say priorities, but other activities um, that it couldn't quite overcome. And again, that's just personally me, how I use them. Um, yeah, see, it's, again, funny, it's, it's funny that you say that because for me, it was the opposite. Really? For, yeah. For me, it was like, I would be sitting at the airport lobby and I'd be like, man, I really wish I had my Space Marines Codex with me. And then I'd be like, oh yeah, I have it on iBooks. Let me just download it really quick. Um, you know, and then spend 20 minutes reading it while wait for the gate to close. Well, and it was really nice to be able to just download it right in the morning when you woke up on those Sundays. So you didn't have to go to like the midnight releases and stuff like that to get your book. So like they're, they're de like I said, I'm, I'm reevaluating my situation, but there were many, many good points about the enhanced. Definitely the enhanced over the digital books. If you don't have an Apple device out there, sorry. What's the difference? Oh, it's huge. Aaron, it's you want to tell them the difference? Okay. So the, the the non-enhanced is simply it's just a pdf version of the book um the enhanced version is a digitally interactive uh reference guide where every single page has hyperlinks for all of the rules that are on that page so when you want to see the point cost or the weapon stats or the rule of it you just click the hyperlink and it pops up a little text box that says flamer means this um, or it says, please reference this other page, and then it gives you an icon to take you to the other page, and you read it, and then you push another button, and it takes you back to the page that you were at. But it also has a live uh, table of contents, so that at any point in time, you can just click a button, you can go to your table of contents, you can switch sections, and you can keyword search, so you can be like, I want to see all units that have flamers, right? So you type flamers, and it says... These are all the guns with flamers. Which one do you want to look at? Or these are all the units that are holding flavor, flamers. Which one? So do you it basically want to look at? puts a little bit of a database that you can search over it. It's a wiki. Okay. Yeah. It's um, a it's a wiki and a book, but they also they did. How it much for more is that? I think it's forty five dollars to sixty dollars. Yeah, I think they were like ten, ten, ten or fifteen dollars more than the uh, the standard digital edition, which brought them up into line with what you would pay for the paper codex, I believe. Yeah, I think um, that's correct. Uh, another thing that I really liked about it, you could highlight stuff. You could copy and paste text. Um, so, you know, you could literally, like, if you're having a conversation with someone on the computer, or not the computer, your mobile, you could just select what you want, paste it in a chat, uh, chat application, and go. So there were, there were a, a lot of benefits. I would agree with Aaron. I would never be interested in buying an EPUB of these books um the the enhanced edition is if you're going to go digital is 100 percent the way to go i will say that there was a short period of time where in the cgn studio we had an ipad and more importantly we had an ipad stand it was an ipad music stand meant for like somebody playing an instrument um that actually fit that ipad and that was fantastic i don't know if you remember that josh yeah i do like i really really liked that 
the problem, of course, was eventually the iPad had to be recharged and it get, didn't get put back in the stand. And then they came out with a new iPad and then that iPad didn't fit the stand and blah, blah, blah. But for that brief moment of time with an Things iPad good. in a stand right next to the table, I think it was just as useful as uh, a book, a hard copy book. But we don't know what the interaction is going to be between the digital editions and with their new list builder and we don't know what they're going to be doing with the Radas. I'm trying to remember if the digital editions got updated with the Rada. And I want to say, they did. like, they did. Yeah. When they first came out with them, it took them really, really long to do the updates. Um, the last couple books, I feel like, have been much better. But you're still talking, you know, two, three weeks. Um, I want to say in one case, I waited like two or two and a half months for an update um, early on using them. Um, but yes, they do eventually get updated. The other hang up is right with this whole data environment. Sometimes you have some weird stuff like they had, uh, what was it like power fists were linked to like the, the power sword or something like that. So if you didn't know what you were doing, right, you never played it again. You don't know what the difference between power fist and the power sword was, um, that hyperlink being incorrectly pointed, um, ruined every single power fist for you in the game. Yes, and there was also you know, there was also a circumstance where the rule was just flat out different. <laughs> like it really? wasn't it was, yeah, it wasn't an errata thing. It was just like in the in the codex it, I think it was like a minus 2 AP and in the book it was a minus 1 AP. Um and I remember getting into a, a big dis a big heated discussion with somebody at Grognards playing a game uh in one of the few games I played without Josh, of course. Uh and like me opening the digital edition and it clearly saying negative two and him opening the um, the paper copy and it saying negative one and then checking the FAQ and there's no FAQ. Like it wasn't eroded and then my book was up to date. It was just one of them was wrong. It was just flat out wrong. Yeah, that's a bummer. I haven't I hadn't run into anything like that, but I can I can see it happening. Right. You know, because you have two different core resources you know that you're maintaining um i wish there was some way to get those updates and stuff into the actual books outside of the errata platform not that it's necessarily bad um but it does you know pose some issues in and of itself yeah but. they could always make stickers right but then they're always making stickers to put in your books <laughs> yeah i don't know i kind of like that idea a lot or you know what? Because we've uh, we've seen a lot of these data slates, right? Little cardboard things that come out and have the rules for the armies on them, and all they they release some with the Imperial Knights. We saw a whole bunch of them in uh, AOS, right, guys who play AOS? Yes, yes guys who um, play AOS. You could you could put your errata, you know, at least for units and point changes in the way that weapons work. You could put those into little cards and sell a new pack of cards. I would buy cards for my miniatures in a heartbeat, dude. Be able to have a stack of cards and just flip through only the things I need. That would be. See, it's, fu it's funny. It's funny that you say that because we never use the cards. We never. We not only never use the cards, and my favorite thing about the change between uh, Fantasy Flight's X-wing version one to version two was that they got rid of all of the information on the cards that often changed, specifically like points and special rules, and the card just kind of referenced what ship it was and its basic stats and then all of the special rules and points were in the app and and are in the app and i hmm. lo i love that i love that because you log into the app and you don't have to worry like is my card out of date you know what i mean is like it, like it's just it's it's a really good hybrid of digital rules and digital list building and a playable physical thing that you can have in front i don't know if you would agree with that josh I do. No, and that's nice. That's not something I've ever come into contact with because I haven't played X-Wing. So do you think that the industrial spies from GW are going to go out and, you know, while they're stealing info from all of our brains through their new list building app, <laughs> are they going to go and, you know, start looking at um, some other companies and how they're dealing with their digital slash print material um, and try to kind of get more in line with what you're saying is like this fantastic system. And I have oh, yeah. absolutely no reason to doubt what you're saying. I hope um, so. I, I would like to see, you know, something like that where I don't, to your point, where I don't have to worry about is my, is my rule or my point cost, is the way my weapon working 
the way it's supposed to, you know, a la GW circa 2020 tournaments. The problem with the uh, format for uh, the di- it's just different for X Wing. They're not selling anything but the the models in that game. Mm. Um, so that's different than selling a codex or something like that. So I don't think it'll be compatible with uh, with 40k. Uh, it'd be nice, but it's it's not compatible. Well, Pipe we'll see with the I... new the new app, um, and maybe there's like an enhanced edition of the book where it might not be like the collector's edition, but it could have also the QR code or whatever for you to just add that codex right into the app. Uh, that's uh, unfortunately almost a um, pay to pay to win kind of thing. Unfortunately, if, if you can have your stuff automatically updated every time just by spending extra money, I wouldn't want to see that in the game. Well, it's only doing that if you, if you, I mean, pay, if you pay the money. Wait, why why is that pay to win? That's yeah. Are are we doing that right now? What are you talking about? Well, we're not. We're you're not paying for the convenience, right? But you're still getting the updates just because you don't have them slotted into your application or Battle Scribe didn't do them or you didn't put them if, on your Excel. If you're sheet. not, if you don't have to pay for them, then yes, that's great. If you have to pay, like oh, you you're saying a, if. You're saying right. if it's only an option to get the errata via money. Right. Because Understood. you're saying that you're paying extra money for that to happen uh, with your current books, which I don't like, especially if, if everyone's going to be using the app. No, no, you're not paying extra money because the, the enhanced digital version is the same price as the physical copy. So you're actually getting less by buying the physical copy because you are not getting a book that automatically updates. Um. I feel like the problem with that is uh, that you are getting less because I can guarantee in eight years when you want to really look at the old fluff from the book um, and your iPad is now version 342 and you can't even open up that program anymore and it's been updated like 50 times since then, I can always go ahead and take a look at my my regular copy and take a look. I feel like that is... uh, I don't know. I'd be really angry if they pushed us only to digital. Oh, I don't think they'd ever I, I, go. I don't think they're, they're they're pushing only to digital. But, but th- that's what they would be doing if the errata would be only done for digital. Yeah, they'd that... be making you pay twice, or they're charging you just for them to do the errata. No, the errata is free. But if you have the but if you have to the use codex... their app, then it's not free. If the no, if if tournaments are requiring you to submit list through the app, and there's been an errata and you haven't paid for the automatic errata updates, then they are. Well, that would break tournaments right there. So yeah. maybe we have to rethink that because they're not going to say, okay, to be able to be in this tournament, um, yeah, that's fine. You need to use the app because it's a tournament app. Right. But you you have to also pay for the faq right that's not going to happen now do, just because we're talking about all this paying and apps and so on and so forth i was under the assumption i may have read it somewhere i might have just invented it that the app was going to be a free to download thingamajiggy end of story am i am i just the age of super one is free with no points but, you have, but with no points so it's worthless yeah, but I thought we were talking about a full feature list building, like actual, I can use this to, as we were saying, create a list and submit it for a tournament. You can right. um, pay for it. Right. Uh, and yeah. actually, no one uses the Age of Sigmar one for really? tournaments because it's trash. It is trash. I don't know how, but GW cannot make anything that is a list builder worth a darn. Okay, well, that is, um, I hope, and it's not, it's and not very fit. discouraging. It's not free. Uh, it is. It is very discouraging. Um, every uh, every single game of AOS, which I, I haven't played in a long time, I made on the AOS app, uh, and there were some really fun things about the app that that you could see all of the different models and that you could preview their rules and then you could drag and drop them into a list and it told you if there were problems relating to your list and it allowed you to pick the different. They're not called battalions, but they're called like what are they called? the special groups of people. Um, 
it just it the problem with with the app was that it did not output the data in as useful of an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper as Battlescribe. That was the problem, and that's a that's a huge problem. Yep. I mean, so so long as the new so so long as they can find a way for you to export it as a PD as a concise PDF, um, and print it, then it'll be fantastic. If, if. What if you never have to print your list again? Well, well you always, I, I, you're going to be at a, a place that will require a printed list. I guarantee it. Oh, at some point, but I mean, I could see that, like, if it actually works and it can validate lists and it works well, and you can just hit a button and boop, it's submitted to the event. I would love that. That would be really, really cool. I would really, really like that. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to be hopeful for. There is. Yeah. And the Overwatch rules has made us feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I just wish they would have gotten rid of command points. They're terrible. bad. Explain, Josh. Why do you think so? I found oh, We talked about points. this last time. It's a No, talk more. There's too much memorization of this granular system that you have to use to not only build your army but utilize it's a secondary um uh, whatchamacallit uh a resource system that is yeah it's it's bad it, there's how many armies of 40k lots okay and each one of them has like 30 of them so if you have to go, if you really want to be on your game and be the top-notch player, you not only have to memorize yours, but all your opponents, which is like probably thousands of, uh, of different... Which ain't happening. Ain't happening no. for me anyway. And that is ridiculous. It's it's dumb. It's the worst part of of 8th, and it's going to be the worst part of ninth, unfortunately. So do you think I'm just that... like poo-pooing it, but I would you, love you to are. play games. You are. I would love to play with games without it. I, I really would. You're on the poo-poo train today. I, have you I, have you tried a game without command points in this edition? No, nobody plays. Actually, you know what? Here's how yes, you can tell we how garbage played, we are. No, we have played games without command points because both of Josh and I have forgotten what our command points were for the entire game. 100%. Nice. And we only ever really use them to reroll dice. That's true. Because it's yeah. not interesting. It's not worth the brain power that is required to utilize them. See, and, and when I go through and I build my list and I'm getting ready and stuff like that, you know, I pull out the five cards that are related to my army, and I'm just hoping that my opponent is going to be truthful and an honest guy like me, right? Because, as you said, I have no idea what the Necron command abilities are. It's, I don't know. But I've, I've found I can dial it down, and I do like that they give you some extra dimension. And they give you the ability to like really kind of stick the knife in at the right time, in the right place, in the right uh, force to get stuff done. But with that, it can be confusing even for the player whose army it is, right? Of what do all these things do? How do they work together? I got these special yeah. rules. Do I remember to use it? Um, so there's there is a lot of opportunity for mistakes. And well, there's the game, a lot right? of weird abuse. Yeah. It's only good for abuse, mm. not uh, not good for anything else, as far as I'm concerned. I would disagree. I still That's feel that they're disagree. very fluffy uh, in some aspects. They unlock the really cool special abilities that you can do that makes your army unique. But that um, should already be built into your army. It's like an unnecessary system that's added on top. Well, I don't know. That's it's, how I feel. I mean, I get added. the perspective. No. I also feel that if you're going into a game against someone, you're not going to always also know just what their basic models on the table do, right? And all their special abilities, right? I don't know. I think that I have a really good idea of what's coming to the table since everything's WYSIWYG. If I've glanced at the book, I kind of know what they do, but I will not know what all of their command point stuff does. You won't know by looking at a model what the special abilities are on that model. You can see, oh, it has a melta. Well, most of the models don't have a lot of special abilities. Well, and so, so like, 
I mean, I've played some not fancy, fancy tournaments, but I spent a lot of time back in the day, you know, trying to study and understand my opponents. And I could, you know, the big thing was picking out units that were really dangerous that you needed to do something with. Otherwise, they were a problem. Right. right. And now that we're talking about command points and those kind of things, I don't know which units are eligible to use the death command stratagem on, you know, or how that chains with this other thing. Or maybe you have a guy that I always write off and I mean, combos like, with another, you know, eh. the problem, but, the problem for me, good, the, the problem for me is that that comes down to play style and that comes down to some unwritten and unspoken rules. And the thing for me in playing games like this is it's my opinion, because I know this is not a rule and I know that people are going to vehemently disagree with me is that you need to be reminding people and telling people what's happening and what the potentials are. And I can tell you that Doug from Table War, who is a huge tournament player, who does very, very well in tournaments, beats people while doing that. You know what I mean? Like, like he will say, hey, don't forget, I, this one grot line in front is all one squad, which means that you can't charge over it and I have the de-jump rule. So just please remember that while you go into your turn. And, and and he's still able to pull off what he needs to pull off. So I think part of it is like, you gotta, you have to understand that there are so many rules and you have to have some player etiquette to be like, this is what I'm doing. This is how I'm doing it. Do you have a response? Do you want to read it? Um, and if you don't do that, that's when it gets frustrating. Right. I mean, it's an open rule system, right? And it always has been. It has been like, you don't need, like, there's nothing holding you back from asking, what does that do? And the opponent, for all, like, intents and purposes, like, they have to uh, tell you what that rule does. Or right. What that but, model does. but there have been situations where you'd be like, oh, can this guy charge me right now? Right. And they'll be like, no, he can't charge you right now. And then you move your models and then they go, oh, I'm spending a command point to charge you. And you go, well, I just asked you if he could charge me, and you said no. And he's like, well, the default rule is that he can't charge you. I'm spending a command point to use this special ability that allows him to charge me. Oh, at the start of a lot of games, I'll just straight up ask, what are your, like, movement shenanigans? Uh, and I'll ask, like, what do you have that increases movement and stuff like that? But I'll also try and glance over the opponent's uh, command list or stratagems. Where are you getting that stratagem list from? Their they, book. They have to provide yeah. it. Their book? Yeah. Their Re book. Their book. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. I'm Wait. sensing some salt from Josh. I'm is just this, like... Is this a dig at, at ebooks again? Yeah. What if they don't want to let you use their... Uh... They have to. They have uh -oh. to. They don't oh, have to that... let you use their thing. They yes, can just they hold it. They nope. can hold it out for you and nope. be like, look. Incorrect. No, that is not... That's so I, I that think that incorrect. brings up a very interesting and important point. If you go right? to a judge at Adepticon and you say, I asked this person to read their rules and they won't show me their rules or they're only holding it over the table where I can't read them, the judge will force them to show you the rules. That is a standard tournament rule. It's an open rule. You have to show people the rules. No, they held it out and you have to stare at their tablet. That That's completely legal. I'm just saying, <laughs> there's some people I've played in tournaments that no, I wouldn't want. I have a book... <laughs> and I would give them my book, but you don't want to give them your tablet because they might drop it. That's right. Maybe yep. they got Cheeto fingers. I don't want them on my tablet. Or they're just not a nice person. You don't know what they're gonna do. Yeah, maybe they'll get angry and smash your f stuff in. <laughs> they flip the table and run out the store with your tablet. Yep. Maybe that that was their whole ploy. They have a fifty dollar <laughs> army. And they want your uh, they want your tablet. Now I know why your gray knights are all just pewter torsos <laughs> oh gosh so I, i'm i'm painting ronin not in the comic book style because it is he is a green monstrosity he just looks like ridiculous so he's getting repainted what is so you uh, doing him like the movie style i'm doing more of like the movie style yeah what, okay. were, you, what were you gonna say sean about tournaments and people and books oh i just i i understand not wanting to let people touch your stuff like i get it you know and that makes complete and utter sense to me but at the same time and, and this is why i'm very picky nowadays with who i play with right i don't want to spend three and a half hours or however long the game takes um with someone that i don't want to be 
hanging out with, right? That's my fun time. I, I deserve to enjoy that and have fun. And if I'm not going to have fun against an opponent, then I don't want to play that game, right? But I have been in many, many situations in the past um, with many, many people that I don't care to interact with ever again and would have serious qualms about handing my $1,000 iPad to. So I, I get the need for that transparency, but I also personally have like a visceral reaction to a couple people that I've played games with. Right? Okay, well, so I like, would, what I would say to that is if you are going to a tournament knowing that you need to provide the rules and the only thing that you bring with you is an iPad, then you have an obligation to share that iPad because you had 11 months to print out your rules and photocopy your command points uh, so that you had a physical piece of paper to bring to them. That's so, illegal, though. Guys, I think it's really simple. Just set the tablet down on the table and be like, look down, and I'll swipe when you tell me to swipe. <laughs> He's like, I want you to what? zoom in on this. I want you to zoom in that. Okay. You're He's trying not to set up your it. army. You've it's only got break. 15 minutes to set up your Problem army. Problem solved. <laughs> you should see the giant. You should see. So they make these things. You have a kid. They make these things for kids. They're like these giant colorful styrofoam things that you put ipads in and the ipad becomes indestructible so oh yeah yeah you're you're right you're you right just, you can just do that i i you know you don't they like but then i have less money to spend on little plastic soldiers all right you know we don't i'm done with this <laughs> argument uh, i thought all, it was a good argument we all agree that books are better that <laughs> books books are the way to go no i'm still up in the air man i'm gonna i think i might do kind of like a partial next time like my main important armies that i play all the time maybe it just needs to be that i don't even know i don't know i don't know what i'm gonna do well let's see what the app is and like how much use that we can get out of it right? i have zero yeah. faith in that unfortunately yeah, but right now you have zero faith in faith in the rules you have zero faith in the models you have so no the models are great except for the space marine ones <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, just, I'm just being serious. I mean, the, the buggy <laughs> kills it for me, but okay, the rest of them are just like, I give up. Yep. I'm shutting my camera off. They're just, they're just bigger, bigger up. space Marines. <laughs> they just got a little roid in them. <laughs> a little roid. Uh, but there was a lot of that kind of criticism when the Centurions came out and so on and so forth. So Rightly so. Rightly so. <laughs> I love yeah. Centur I love Centurions. I, I would have rather seen it as a completely enclosed like exosuit so I didn't like see the guy inside of it, right? But I'm three feet away from him. I can't even really tell, honestly, when I got him on the table. So I'm pretty I'm pretty okay with them, but I digress. And this whole thing has been a digression. <laughs> <laughs> We've been digressing for the past forty five minutes. <laughs> All right, I think we covered everything that we need to cover. Uh, let's just do a quick health and wellness check-in. Sean, how are you? Um, I'm a little depressed. Oh, is I'm it very tired. Is it because of Overwatch, <laughs> or is it because is, it is because not of because Josh, of Overwatch? Josh is relenting, unrelenting. It is. It is <laughs> not because of Josh's relentless Overwatch taunting. <laughs> um, no, nah, man. It's just you know, there's there's a lot of stuff. Um, going on, you know, politically and in the public health sphere right now that is, you know, extremely concerning to me personally um, for all sorts of different reasons. And while I might not have been uh, painting that much, I have been doing as much escapism in my garage as humanly possible um, to get away from that stuff. So I agree. Fun times. And there's a lot of people who are in a way, 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 way worse situation than I am. And I have, you know, Love to you guys because I have no idea how you deal with it. I'm I'm holding on by my fingernails. It's a crazy wild time, and I think escapism is about the best that we can do, especially for those of us that are having to stay indoors because of health issues or just taking this uh, seriously more than some others. Um, yeah. Like I know I have painted more and built more models in the past couple months than I probably did all of last year already. Yeah, I've had the opposite thing. Like, I have lost my mojo completely up until recently when we were doing started these paint chats because I was like, "Is there a point? Like, am I going to be able to see these models on the table against somebody else? I don't know. I hope so. God dang it! I just dropped a <laughs> paintbrush. I was I was going to say because Josh draws his power from the souls of his defeated enemies, 
<laughs> and without that, <laughs> he finds it difficult to paint. Is so that, is that why? Is that why? Oh, I dropped the model and I just broke him. Oh no. No. Is that why, Josh? You always get like after our Wednesday, our Wednesday games when we film for the channel, and you crush me as you always crush me. Is that why on Thursday you always paint so many models because you're just stealing all my energy? Oh my god. Uh, yes. I just dropped him and my cat's fur ball was there. <laughs> so now he's furry! Yeah, Afro. Oh, Ronin. Where art thou, Ronin? <coughs> oh, oh. It's like Donkey Do now. So how about, uh, how about any, um, good TV shows, movies, books? Uh, we've been watching the, uh, oh, that new show on Apple TV. It's about the space program if the Russians made it to the moon first. Oh, what's that? Yeah, I haven't heard of that. I don't remember what it's called, but it's pretty good so far. What's Apple TV? Apple TV is uh, basically them trying to be... Uh, Netflix? Dis- is that Netflix, a channel on Netflix? It's trashy, oh. but it's trashy, and uh, it mostly just tries to get you to buy stuff from other companies. I, I did watch an Apple TV show. I watched that the one about the video game company, and it was really, really funny. Um, I was also I also watched the first five minutes of the other show that has Jason Momoa in it, and everybody is blind. It's called what? C. Okay, so listen to the, the, the rationale about this movie. Here's the movie. I mean, the show. It's many years in the future. There's a disease that basically almost wiped out humanity. And because of that disease, everyone is blind. And everything is regressed to, like, tribalism and stuff. And then a a child with sight has been born. And then that's where the show starts. And there's, like, all these people trying to get the, the sighted child. It's just bizarre. Interesting. And Jason Momoa is the sighted child? No, he is the father of the sighted child, as far as I know so far. Mm-hmm. I love Jason so, Momoa. So, for anyone who's got kids out there, I'm going I'm to get away from Apple TV because I don't even know how to spell that. Um, spies, <laughs> what? spies in Disguise. Best worst, children's movie worst of movie. our generation. Oh my is God. the best performance I've ever seen Will Smith give. He's got I, a tiny hand. It's great. It's great. My uh, kid will watch it. That's the one with the bird, right? The one where he turns into a pigeon. That is the worst movie. You just, you just, you haven't just given up and let it happen yet, Aaron. I have. Do you know what Adam is really into right now? You want to know what movie? Not Spies in Disguise. The Emoji Movie. Oh, oh my God. God. Now, see. Uh... See, I think that's bad parenting letting him watch <laughs> it. <laughs> it really is. It really is. I keep trying to dissuade him. I'm like, no, we shouldn't watch it. He's like, no, I really want to watch it. He's like, when's the second one coming out? I'm like, uh, the second one's not coming out. He's like, why? I'm like, well, not everybody agrees with you on how much they like the movie. And he's like, well, they're wrong. <laughs> oh, I love it. He's like, you have to tell them, Daddy, that you like the movie so they'll make another one. <laughs> Did you tell them? No. <laughs> Nor did I promise that I would. Remember when Picard is in that movie as the poop emoji? Yes, I do. Let's see I, haven't, really. I haven't seen the movie, but that's what I've heard. So yeah, uh, Patrick Stewart plays the poop emoji in the emoji movie. That oh. is one hundred percent true. If if you haven't seen it yet, you're not missing anything. You're really not, Aaron. You what probably... about you? What do you got going on? Uh, so I watched through Avatar The Last Airbender. Hey, um, Delna and Adam are, are watching that too. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Now, I tried to watch it a couple years back and couldn't get into it. Uh, but once you start really kind of understanding some of the underlying themes, um, not spoiling anything, but a lot of the story is about, like, the effects of war on people in society. Um, and it's really interesting and it's actually i'm not going to say it's deep but they touch on a lot of stuff and it's definitely not just a kids show at all in my opinion did you watch Um, the did you watch the uh m night Shyamalan movie no i have not watched that yet i do have it but right now first i'm watching through legends what do you mean you have it uh i i have procured the avatar movie like what is it on like it's a, a, it's, like a, a it's a book disc? it's a Apple book tv, he bought yeah, a I, book. Got, TV. <laughs> I got the enhanced edition 
<laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I got the digital version of it. <laughs> Um, but I'm watching through Legends of Korra right now, which is kind of the sequel to it that happens like a hundred years later. And that has a completely different art style, completely different beat. It has a really interesting narrative approach because like every episode starts off with like old timey radio catching you up on what happened last week, uh, which is just kind of fun, I think, from a storytelling, st storytelling standpoint. Sounds like Fallout. Nope, not at all. Josh, oh. speaking of Fallout, what have you been up to? Uh, playing Fallout and watching that show I talked to you about already. <laughs> it's actually a very good show, and it's basically what would happen if the uh, Russians beat us to the moon, and uh, they just kept whooping our butts, and we kept like racing them. So uh, it go it goes off the rails real fast and diverges from our our timeline and this is like back in uh the 60s and 70s so it has like uh the advancements in both of our space programs are like go off the rails instead of just being the cold war it's the cold war in space so they're trying to build like a space base on the moon with rockets i mean missiles and stuff uh it's actually really cool awesome well sean and i have been playing eve and man you're just you're such a negative millie today no i'm not i just made a sound with my mouth <laughs> so i'm just gonna go me. ahead and explain context to you i'm gonna <laughs> pretend you're my eight-year-old <laughs> <laughs> and we're just not gonna have the conversation because it's not gonna mean anything to you so continue uh so we've been doing that i've also been playing a bit of um of the fallout 76 i'm really enjoying the new wastelander expansion and all the new quests and the npcs so yeah, did you like all that stuff i gave you today uh no I, I found every single plan for an animal on a animal head on a plaque um very upsetting actually <laughs> and all i wanted was the tinker workbench which fortunately you gave me and i should have just asked you for the tinker workbench so that i didn't have to have nope now you got all of that now you all, have all the animals all of these with all these animal heads that I need to mount. Uh, is the new expansion for that where you have to watch like a parade or something? What? <laughs> Someone what? was telling me uh, just this week that there's like some I expansion or something in Fallout 76 where you need to watch it like an entire that's, parade. That's the Fosh Not event that just ended oh. and you actually are have to get the parade goers uh they're like robots you have to get them started uh you have to do some quests for them and then you have to march with them and various creatures try to attack and disrupt the uh the thing so it's not you watching a parade it's you okay. actually your your, uh, secu your security for a parade your security and you 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 initiate that by finding the people and get them getting them started and then after all that, uh, other players drop a nuke and irradiate you, everything. They could do that. Actually, if you drop a nuke there, you can't even start the event because uh, you need intestines from certain creatures. And if there's a nuke there, uh, the creatures will no longer be able to thrive and they will die and they won't respawn and you will not be able to get their intestines to start the event. What if you start it and someone drops a nuke? I mean, it's the same. You would just kill people instead. Yes, but you, most, can, you can nuke people who are most doing people, any event in the game. Most people don't do the nuke there when the, the event was happening because the event was actually very uh, easy and it gave really fun and cool rewards. Well, it's good to hear. I mean, we are all familiar with events not giving fun nor cool rewards. So. Yeah. I'm glad that Here's we, Ronan. I'm glad that we found something that you're passionate about defending. I defend <laughs> digital parades. You know what I just purchased today? I purchased some 40k items. What? Tell me. Tell me all about it. On um, Barter Town, somebody was selling all of the old um, uh, Rogue Trader, uh, Death Watch, and something else. It's uh basically all the old role-playing books and they were selling them all for like five to fifteen dollars and i just bought them all yeah they were all the third edition warhammer fantasy right 
well, no, this was the 40K version. He was also oh. selling Warhammer Front Fantasy. So those ones are, you know, they actually are are going online for like up to $150 each. Right. So I was about to say, you didn't buy this because you're actually interested in doing anything. No, with I them am. Except reselling them at a higher price. I I am interested in doing something with them. <laughs> doing. But it's an investment. Uh huh. <laughs> Unlike me, who I got the second edition book right here because second edition is best edition, and I'm currently playing through a campaign of that right now, which has been a lot of fun. Hey, hey, where's my invite, man? Where's my invite? This is a super secret group. Once we do uh, Shadow Run, which I think my book is lost in the ether. Oh um, no! Yeah, I bought a second edition book for that guy. Was also Shadowrun. selling Shadowrun uh, main book. What? Yeah, send me the link. Shoot it to me right now. Give me all the link. <laughs> Hold on. Give him the link. Yeah, I got a really good deal on the Shadowrun second edition, and now it's like lost in a mail depot in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Bummer. Yeah, he's got the Shadowrun twentieth anniversary Koru book. Is that what you want? No. No. Okay, fine. Shut up. He does have the D fourth two, edition, not twenty. Two. Nope. Fourth edition was awful. Best edition. No, four point five. Stop yelling. Gee, what, what are is... you talking about? Four point five. What? Three point five. Three point five. There's no three point five. There's no three point five. That's Pathfinder. 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 Wait a minute. You're telling me that there's no, there's. Oh yeah, it is Pathfinder. You're right. My my favorite role playing game that I played was something that I don't remember. Wait a minute. There's um, a Dungeons and was... Dragons 3.5. D&D 3.5, yes. Yeah. D&D 3.5. Stop interrupting Sean. Sorry. Nobody knows what you're talking about. There were almost no rules. You had a six-sided dice. If you rolled a six, you rolled again. If you got another six, you could keep rolling sixes, so on and so forth. And eventually, you could do crazy, crazy, amazing things, or the opposite with ones. Um, you got a very tiny, tiny modifier that the gm applied and the idea was anything you can do anything you can think of doing you could do in this game right so it's like i'm gonna shoot the the fire extinguisher on the wall next to the zombie well he didn't say there was a fire extinguisher but now you shot the fire extinguisher and rolled a six and it explodes and kills all the zombies so easy so that's fun. how yeah so that's how all scotty, that mattered scotty has his own system yeah um and he was at uh, Valhalla and Miranda and I played a bunch of games. I've actually played a couple games with him over uh, the interweb while in lockdown and he has his own system that is a D6 system and he gives you these very simple character sheets and you're just rolling D6s and ones are bad and sixes are good um, and you can do whatever you want and you roll a six and you know what that is it makes the game so much more focused on character development and story and fun and so much less on what you wrote down on your sheet of paper you might like the uh did you remember to cast magic missile yeah the new aos uh, rpg that just came out is a d6 system and sounds like it's very focused on the fluff other other than i'm still very very unwilling to learn any fluff about games workshop which is the most bizarre thing ever. Really? Is uh, he really? He hates, yeah, he's, he really hates the fluff. <laughs> I don't know if I would use the word hate. I just am very indifferent to it. You're not indifferent. You actively uh, avoid learning it. <laughs> Except for that one time that Sean trapped me in the car for two hours and told me the entire Space Wolf history. Nice. Well, that's a fabrication because if you knew anything about the lore, you would know that I hate Space Wolves above all other. My my favorite tactic on Space Wolves forums is the meme of the two wolves having sex. It's the greatest. Someone talks about Space Wolves, you drop it. There's no words. It's just a picture. So, um, wait, I'm sorry. You <laughs> you hate Space Wolves. I hate Space You're Wolves. out on Space Wolves forums and you have a favorite <laughs> Space Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> hey, make of it what you will. <laughs> I'm, I'm making that you might be a, a closet <laughs> Space Wolf fan. <laughs> nope, nope. I hate nope. you guys. Look at this meme of this, of this pretty wolf. I mean, this gross wolf. <laughs> no, man, the Space Vikings just never did it for me. Plus, they're the arch nemesis of the Dark Angels, who are 
not arch nemesis, but, you know, friendly, healthy rivalry, whatever crap, of the Dark Angels, who were my first Imperial army. Um, as well, I'm a huge Zinch fan, so that goes, you know, Aramon and Magnus and all those guys against the Space Wolves. So from a fluff perspective as well as an aesthetic perspective, I have just always been like Space Wolves. I Space Wolves for me are right around, <clears throat> right just above Orcs. I feel the same thing. Orcs and Space Wolves are too cartoonish for me. Uh, I don't know why. That's just how I feel. Orcs are cartoony. I mean, their whole principle is they think of it and it, and it happens. And it happens, right. And they do that because otherwise they would have all killed each other on a planet bajillion years ago. Okay, would that okay. be so bad? <clears throat> I mean, then we wouldn't have orcs. I restate my question. Would that be so bad? <laughs> are are Hellblasters good? Are Hellblasters good units? Hellblasters are awesome. But just the standard gun. Don't take the heavies or the assaults. Well, I don't even know which gun they have. I think I assume the ones I have are just the standard gun. Um, did you did they come out of one of the uh, the box sets or do you have like these the are actual... all all of the stuff that I'm painting is two box sets of the original Space Marines. Yes, we we'll paint the... them all. They're all the regular guns. They are fantastic. They're the best thing. They're the only thing you want to run on them, unless of course they change a bunch of stuff, which they will because Valley will want the big guns. Well, obviously, I'll have to buff out some big guns. But the only mm. other stuff I bought was the tanks and the walkers. And I bought... Um, I bought the executioner and these guys. The eliminators. Guys? The eliminators. Oh, yeah. Those guys uh, are so cool looking. They really are. And I think I also have, I have a box of reavers, too. Uh, that I need to do, and I have my Centurions, which I bought to replace my Graf Centurions that now I don't have to replace. Well, crack them open real quick, dude. I mean, no, if you got the I box don't... right there. No, no, no. We oh. just want to know whether it comes multi multi setup it, or it comes. Yeah, if you look, it comes with multi both. setup. You are yeah, correct. Okay. You are one hundred percent correct. Crack them open. I was hoping maybe you would forget about that part of the conversation. Las cannons, man. If you've already got the Grav ones, Las cannons. Or bolters on everything. Or and just wait Josh's to find favorite out. Thing. Yeah. That, you know, I always have new edition paralysis around that kind of stuff. If I've got something not built, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to build it because what if I Cause oh, I'll just magnetize this gun? Ugh. Yep. Well, yep, yep. gentlemen, it has been wonderful hanging out with you today. We've been talking for 90 minutes. Can you believe it's been an hour and a half already? It's been cool. a lot. I broke a model. I dropped my paintbrush. You Did you fix it? I, I think that we are yeah. all all a little bit on the um, feeling a little bit concerned. Maybe is the is the most the best word for the new rules. I'm hoping that there will be some releases over the next couple of days that'll get our, get our fire going again. That'll get us excited as excited as the announcement itself. I know that I'm personally excited, um, and I'm hoping that they pull it all together really well. But it is what it is. If anybody wants to leave us a line, go ahead. Give us a comment. Uh, I'm going to keep this up for another couple minutes so you still have a few chances to say what's on your mind and we will talk about it. Otherwise, you can get a hold of us at coolguysnation.com by signing up for our newsletter or you can sign up for our Patreon where you'll be able to direct message us. Patreon is patreon.com slash coolguysnation. Uh, it'll also be in the link at some point when I fill out the notes eventually, maybe in a month from now. But as always, thank you all for joining us. And we will see you on the table. There you go. I was going to make Aaron say it. I know. I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> Rude. We're, we're just trying to be collaborative here. <laughs> Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Deuces. Later.